All right. Welcome, everybody, to Peter White Public Library. My name's Marty Ackett, and I'm the Adult Programming Coordinator for the library. Um, and it's my pleasure, real pleasure, to have Laura here tonight. Um, um, uh, well, I've been working with Laura for, um, you know, almost, what, seven months? Yeah, since May. Um, so, uh, but I want to let you know a few things that are coming up here at the library in the next week or so. Um, wow, that's loud. Um, <laughs> I should go like that. Luke. No. Um, okay. Um, so tomorrow night we have um, our uh, monthly meeting of the Marquette Poet Circle. Starts at 6.30. From 6.30 to 7.15 we do workshopping poems and talk about poetry. And then at 7.15 we have an open mic where anybody, anybody can come and read, um, read something, sing something, tell a story. We don't care. Um, but um, that's tomorrow night upstairs in the Shiris Room. Um, Monday night, um, we have a really wonderful uh, program called Storytellers and Songsters, and it has a, a, quite a few um, musicians and storytellers who are going to be here. Troy Graham, um, Nate Reed, and the band Atticus, and that starts at 7 p.m. right here in the community room on Monday. And Tuesday night, um, in honor of um, Na um, Native American Heritage Month, we have the band uh, Wawa Yeya, um, who has a uh, they call themselves a tribal progressive band. Um, they're really wonderful performers. They're going to be here 7 p.m. in the uh, community room again on Tuesday night. And then on Wednesday night, we have another thing that's happening right here in the community room, and it's going to be a filmmaker. Um, his name is Jeff Vandesandy. He makes short films, and he's going to be talking about the process of making those short films and showing some of his work as well. And then, if that's not enough, <laughs> on Friday, next Friday, right here in the community room, um, we're going to be showing um, our uh, global cinema, which is um, uh, All Quiet on the Western Front. It's a movie that won all kinds of Oscars last year, including Best International um, Film. So All Quiet on the Western Front, that's next Friday. But today, you're not here to hear about that or see that. Um, today, you're here, you're here to hear Laura Choza, who's a really wonderful physical therapist for pets, um, and she's going to be talking about her work and um, how uh, to go about caring for your pets who might be older and have mobility issues or who've had injuries. So please give a big hand to Laura Choza. One, two, three, four, five. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm so excited to be here. Thank you, Marty. Thank you, Beth. Um, for setting this up. Public speaking is not my forte. I'm going to just come right out and say that. Um, but hopefully when you see, when Juno comes down and you see the progress that she's made, that'll speak volumes. So let's get started. So the way that this is going to work, I'm just going to talk a little bit about physical rehabilitation for pets. Um, you know, all the things that we can do for pets. Um, there's multiple different mo modalities. We usually try to kind of go uh, to kind of go at it from a couple of different angles, whether so physical therapy is just one part of it. Um, so let's get started. Is everybody able to hear me all right? Okay. So I'm Laura Chosa, uh, a licensed veterinary technician, and I just became certified in canine rehabilitation this spring. Um, through the University of Tennessee. Um, I set up my LLC, so it's Superior Paws Re Rehabilitation Services. So I, I just wanted to let you know a little bit about myself and my background. I graduated from Michigan State University uh, with a degree in veterinary technology in 2007 um, and recently re uh, completed the CCRP program through the University of Tennessee. Um, that was in March, actually. And so we'll just start off with what exactly is involved in veterinary physical rehabilitation. Um, so as we know, it's uh, physical rehabilitation, physical therapy has helped many people recover from injuries and post-op surgeries, but increasingly it's being used in small animals um, and actually horses as well. Um, restoring function, mobility, quality of life, um, and I typically work mostly with dogs, um, but it can really be used for just about any animal species. Um, I 
actually just recently moved to a veterinary clinic just across town, Bayshore, uh, Bayshore Veterinary Hospital, and was working with a cat that had an injury. Um, the cat goes, uh, is an indoor outdoor kitty, went outside, came home, and the kitty was completely paralyzed uh, in the rear limbs. Um, one of my lovely coworkers, her boyfriend, uh, built a cart actually for this kitty um, to, just to kind of keep him mentally, you know, kind of stimulated and, and so that because our animal friends get depressed just like we do. Um, and that's really my first uh, hands-on experience with a cat. And uh, this cat just happens to be absolutely wonderful, young, and um, very amenable to all the things that I was doing. I was very impressed, amazed even. So there are a few different types of veterinary physical rehabilitation that I'm gonna talk about. Um, and I can demonstrate some of these on Juno, hopefully, if she cooperates. Um, she's not so much with the hands-on massage and range of motion exercises. She wants to do the work. <laughs> um, but the things that I do on a daily basis, uh, range of motion exercises, so that's flexion and extension uh, of the three major limbs in the rear limb and also the front limb. Um, massage, uh, therapeutic exercise, so that's using the equipment. Um, I'm hoping, uh, so Dr. Hunt just ordered an underwater treadmill for Bayshore. I'm hoping to start utilizing that probably the end of December, early January. Fingers crossed, everybody, for me, please. <laughs> um, and then I'll talk a little bit about other pain relieving modalities. So there's laser therapy, which uh, as far as the modalities, that's probably the one that I use the most. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Therapeutic ultrasound and neuromuscular stimulation. So range of motion. Um, typically, we use passive range of motion, um, so that's typically used after an injury or after um, a pet has had a surgery, uh, basically to help prevent loss of function. Um, so it's kind of one of the first things that we can do postoperatively, basically to just kind of keep the joints moving so they don't become stiff so they don't get muscle atrophy or wasting. And it also improves their circulation to their cartilage as they heal. Um, so there's multiple different types of massage techniques that can be used. Um, but the, the main reason that I like to usually start with that in a program, um, it really reduces stress. It helps me bond with the pet, which is really important because if I don't have a connection with the pet, they're not gonna do any of the things that you'll be seeing, uh, hopefully, that are gonna happen here in a few minutes. Um, so, but the really, um, what we're really focusing on for most of these things is decreasing pain and improving their comfort and mobility. So therapeutic exercises, which that's probably most of what the presentation is going to entail today. Um, so, I incorporate some of these things into literally every patient's rehabilitation plan. Again, for strength, balance, coordination, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about what the different, um, excuse me, um, what the, the different pieces of equipment, how I use them and why. So, um, I'm going to focus on the underwater treadmill because that's what I'll be hopefully getting here pretty soon. Um, but obviously, uh, land treadmill is also something that's used all the time in physical rehabilitation. Um, and basically, the difference between a land treadmill and just walking over ground is that they're having to really think about where they're placing their feet. And they actually have... Um, that movement of the treadmill is helping them move forward and not have to do as much effort. So especially in a pet that uh, has a lot of atrophy or is just in general having trouble getting around. Um, the underwater treadmill, uh, the reason it's, it's so wonderful is that it uses the buoyancy property 
to help with pets that are really having trouble even just standing, I can get them in the underwater treadmill and they can have that feeling of being able to um, stand on their own power, um, which is again really important not only for their physical well-being but also for their mental well-being. Um, so even before pets are able to take steps on land, a lot of times we can get them in the treadmill and kind of get them moving. And it's kind of like goes along with muscle memory and things like that. Um, so again, range of motion, um, which I'll talk a little bit more about still, flexibility, mobility, and also balance. So laser therapy, uh, which I use practically on every single pet that I see. Um, so it's light energy, it's used to decrease pain and inflammation, and it improves um, healing time. So it's useful for so many different things, arthritis. Uh, we can even just use it um, superficially on a, a surgical incision to help increase and speed up their, their healing time. Uh, also other wounds, I actually have experience with a excuse me, a degloving injury on a dog um, where really the, the, I guess our best guess was that it was either got into a fight with um, another dog or a wild animal of some kind and there was just a huge open wound. Um, they used the laser therapy superficially and I think it decreased the, or it sped up the healing time by like, 35 to 45%, um, which is incredible um, because the faster that we can get, you know, get, get these things healed because wound care is very difficult, even as a technician, it's probably one of the most difficult things that we deal with. But as an owner, it's, you know, the bandage changes, having to come back to your veterinarian, if there's anything that we can do to speed up that process, amazing. Therapeutic ultrasound, unfortunately, I don't have access to that currently. Uh, it's just another modality that we can use. So um, I think everybody here is probably a little bit familiar with ultrasound. So it's, you're using sound waves, varying frequencies and intensity. It increases blood flow, facilitates wound healing. Um, it's used mostly for uh, tendon and ligament uh, sort of injuries. The neuromuscular electronic stimulation, um, this is typically used for pets, um, let's say that have like paresis, either, either partial paralysis or paresis. Um, and so you're stimulating the nerves and, you're, and for the tens, you're actually <clears throat> causing muscles to contract. So if a pet is completely paralyzed, you can actually cause a, um, a, an actual contraction with these devices, and they're very safe. They've been used in human medicine for many years. So how does it benefit? Um, multiple ways. Again, we talked about pain, reducing inflammation, um, improving, increasing their range of motion, um, their balance and coordination, which that is a lot of what the therapeutic exercise equipment is going to be used for um, helping. And this is going to be particularly uh, um, apparent when I start to show the videos here, with, especially with Juno, restoring muscle mass, um, increasing their muscle strength. Um, we can also use it in our uh, overweight patients, which we see, unfortunately, in our line of work quite a few of <laughs> on a daily basis. Um, and then just, of course, their overall quality of life. Um, so which, you know, actual disease processes um, do, can, can benefit from, from rehabilitation? And, and I mean, really, there's just so many. Um, so the first one kind of that comes to mind for a lot of people is older dogs with arthritis. There are, you know, probably, I don't know, at least four or five a day that come in that could probably benefit from, thanks guys, uh, rehabilitation, tendon, ligament injuries, um, recovery from surgery. So a lot of the patients that I see um, 
have, it's the equivalent to an anterior cruciate ligament uh, rupture in a human. It's called the cranial cruciate ligament, and it's very common in larger dogs and uh, larger dogs especially that are overweight, um, but also in neurologic disorders, um, spinal injuries, intervertebral disc disease. Um, again, the list goes on. So, in just a few minutes, I'm really excited. We're going to bring Juno down. Um, so, but I'm just going to talk a little bit about her first, and I'd like to see, and I'm going to show a few videos of how we started when I first started seeing her, and then you'll be able to see how she's doing today. Um, so she suffered a traumatic injury to her left hip. She had to have a surgery. It's called a femoral head and neck ostectomy. That was in May. And so the purpose of this procedure is to restore pain-free mobility to the damaged hip. And, and it sounds kind of drastic, but um, it's remarkable how quickly these guys recover with this sort, with this sort of surgery. So you're actually, um, this is a, the hip is a ball and socket joint. So this is the ball of the hip and this is the socket and they actually remove the ball or of the hip here. And then what happens is it fills in that area with scar tissue. And typically, they actually do, again, because you know they walk on all fours. They don't, they're not like us. <laughs> um, they recover fairly well from this type of surgery. Um, so the goal is to create, a, again, a false hip joint. And so it's going to be more comfortable for them. They're going to get better mobility. Uh, and generally, they heal very well. Um, but again, there are some stipulations. Uh, if the patient is relatively small, that helps. And if they remain active post-operatively, um, that's also very important. And again, that's why rehab kind of ties in really well with this particular patient. Um, so let's see. So at her initial consultation, uh, my good friend Marty brought her to me for a consultation about three weeks uh, after her surgery. Uh, Dr. Cannon out at Northern Vet uh, referred her. So I do a full physical examination, orthopedic examination, and neurologic examination. I take range of motion measurements, so that's the measure of flexion and extension of each joint, both in the front limbs and the rear. Um, and that's just basically so I can then take objective measurements of their progress. Are they progressing? Are these, you know, are they improving? Or if they're not, I need to change up my plan. So I also take thigh, cir thigh circumference measurements. And so that, again, is a measurement of for muscle mass. Are they improving? Um, because our goal, again, especially if we're going to take Juno as an example, because that's what we're doing today, is we want them to eventually have equivalent muscle mass in both the thighs or in the front limbs if they had a front limb injury. So what I do with every pet at their initial consultation is I provide an at-home exercise plan once, I, once I'm finished with that consultation. Uh, for Juno in particular, that included, um, so these are things that uh, both Marty and Beth were doing at home. Gentle massage, of course, I, I demonstrate all of these things at that consultation. Uh, passive range of motion exercises, slow controlled leash walks, which you're gonna see in a second, that's easier said than done. Um, walking in circles um, around an object, which um, I'll be demonstrating here hopefully with Juno and or a figure of eight pattern, and then also sit to stand exercises, which again, hopefully we'll be able to demonstrate those. So let me, I know that you guys are probably tired of hearing me talking. I just wanna show you, this is our little friend Juno here. Now, as you can see, she still gets around pretty darn good on mostly three legs, and that is the miracle of our four-legged friends here. So these first couple are pretty short. How old is she? She's four. So yeah, slow controlled leash walks. That sounds so simple, but not necessarily. All right. Now we'll 
go to the second one. Again, you can't keep this dog down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if, as you can see, if you, if you notice, the left side there, there's definitely some muscle atrophy going on, which is one of the main things that we worked on. All right. Let me see if I can go back to full screen. If not, you're just going to have to bear with me. So, <laughs> there we are. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, for Juno's rehab, she had her first session about 25 days postoperatively. Uh, so, the initial plan was to see her twice a week for five weeks. So, the first few. Um, sessions. We focused mostly on passive range of motion, massage, and laser therapy, but I did try to spend a few minutes getting her used to the equipment, and um, that would be, so these here, Cavaletti rails, some balance equipment. I'm not even going to try to get on this. Um, and so the discs uh, and bones and then the Cavaletti rails were the main things that I started with, and this guy was kind of one of the first ones and as you can see it's got kind of like a more slippery slippery surface and then this one is a lot more stable so by probably the fifth session I actually think it's probably more like the fourth session um, she was using the equipment like she was born for it so hopefully this plays It helps if they're food motivated also. <laughs> so here, as you can see, I'm assisting her and that's also takes a lot of trust and time. Um, not every dog is going to allow its therapist to assist them to get up onto the equipment, but luckily we had had a few sessions before this and she's just a fabulous dog, so. Okay. Right. Uh-oh. Okay. So, uh, this next video, uh, it was our 11th session. Uh, <clears throat> I had spoken with Marty saying that uh, the pain medication that he had had her on, the nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory, which is called Rimadyl or Carprofen, was no longer needed after the ninth session on the 21st, which is amazing. Um, and then from here, and I'll show you the video in a second, I recommended weekly sessions going forward so we could just maintain her strength and mobility and um, keep going with the exercises. Let's do this one real quick. So now I'm using the equipment um, on the therapeutic pet bed kind of as a ramp. And hopefully today I'll be able to show you she can actually back up, which is extremely difficult for them to do. I don't think that she was backing up in this video yet. I think that was after a few more sessions. But as you can see, this one here, it's really slippery in the middle. So for her to be able to do that again is pretty, pretty amazing. And this one in the middle here is her absolute favorite. Here she is. Thank you so much. Hey, kid. <laughs> Okay, so we're just going to hang out with this. She's excited to do the things. I know, Dad's here. Don't you worry, kiddo. Okay. 
I don't know. Are we going to be able to take care? Okay. Oh, yeah, that's home base. Good work. Good work. And also the almighty cheese sticks. <laughs> Muy importante. <laughs> hey, girl. Hi. Hi, Joe. Yes. You're doing it. You're doing it, Juno. You're making me look good. Come. Good job. Here. Good work. This is the biggest I got. Can you come up? I know you want it. Oh. Okay, we don't have to. Yeah, you're the best. Who's the best one? Nice work. Can you do it? Yes. This way. Nice work. This way. Nice. All right. Here. Nice. Can you do it here? Yes, you can. Nice work. Juno. Up. Oh. Yes. Nice work. Good girl. Shake. Other paw. Can you do it on this one? Yeah, a little, little hop. <laughs> little hop. I know you want to go back to that. Come. Okay. One more time. Can we do it one more time? Other paw. Yes. Okay. Come, June. All right, let's see if we can get you to turn around on this one. Huh? Oh, did somebody come in? I know. Who was that? Let me help you. Good. So this is extremely difficult when they're standing up. As you can see, she has to work really hard. Come. This way. Ready? Good. Nice job. Nice work. It is. She loves this one. Good girl. Now we have done some practice. Good work. I'm going to see if she'll turn around on this one for me, but the past two Fridays, she usually steps off. All right. Good work. Freebie. All right. I know. I'll give that to your dad. Okay. Good work. So, with some of the things that you saw, um, some of the exercises. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, shaking hands. So, again, these things seem so mundane, however. Uh, you're exercising the muscles in the raised limb. So again, I was, you know, alternating. So extensor muscles of the shoulder and flexors of the elbow. Um, on your sheets, uh, also the shaking hands exercise helps with proprioception. So that's their ability to sense where their limbs are in space. Um, so they can perceive the location, the movement, and the action of those parts of the body. And also balance, of course, right? So the stability bones, disc donuts, um, so they're activating atrophied muscles. We're pres preserving the existing musculature, and it promotes strength and endurance of the core muscles and also of the muscles along the spine. Um, so these are called the lumbar apaxials. So those were muscles that were really important uh, for Juno in particular to, to not only strengthen them, but maintain them because of her particular injury. Uh, so proprioception, balance, and then range of motion as well. 
The Cavaletti rails um, are important for range of motion and joint function, flexion of the elbow, the carpus, which is the um, wrist, and also the stifle or knee. So uh, flexion of those three major joints, proprioception and balance. I know that these seem re repetitive, but they're, they're, I'm repeating them often because they're all so important. Um, and then again, activation of atrophied muscles, especially in the limbs, the core, the back flexors. And then let's see if we can do a slight configuration here so I can show you if she'll back up for us. Shall we? Shall we, my, my little friend? My favorite, favorite friend, huh? She doesn't tell anybody, but she knows her favorite. <laughs> I'm not supposed to have a favorite. However, as you can see, how could I not? Okay, ready. Do you know, come. Nice work. Nice work. Okay, we're going to do this first. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I did it already on her own back. Ready? Good. Back up. Good. Forward. Okay. Ready to come back? Yes. Good work. Good work. So proud of you. Come. One more time. Yeah, I know you could hear that. Good work. Yep, her adoring fans. Are you? Nice job. Nice work. You want more? Oh, I know. I didn't fix it. She's like, what are you doing, lady? Huh? Home base. Home base. Good work. So, after all of that, you're all probably wondering what can you do at home? And that is the next step here. So, um, things that you can utilize that you have at home, walking across a couch cushion, a mattress, dog bed, something like this. Um, it forces them to, again, that proprioception, where are my feet in space? Activating core muscles, back muscles, the sit to stand, which I can maybe demonstrate here. Here, can we move you up? Okay. Yeah. Can everybody see her okay? Okay. Juno, come. <laughs> I should have warned you if she's near the mic. <laughs> loud. Yes. Sorry. Good work. Okay. Come. Okay. Again, live, you know, live demo. We'll try it again. One more time. So sit to stand is actually exactly what it sounds like, right? So you're basically getting them into a sit, and then you're, good work. But she always does it. She has flair, right? Okay, <laughs> sit. Nice work. So then let's do this. We're going to do some walking in circles and figure of eights. Sorry about the time it's taking to set this up. It should only take a second. So if you don't have these, you can really use just about any object that they have to move around. So you don't have to have expensive equipment to be able to do this at home. Hi. I know, I put that there so you wouldn't put your little foot through it. Yes. Can I have that? <laughs> I know. I'm excited too, kid. I really am. All right, one more. We're going to do this. Yeah, you're going to show the people, your adoring fans, what you can do, right? 
think maybe I should just turn off the mic temporarily while you're moving around. And sure. Yeah. yeah, as long as everybody can hear me. Walking in circles with a figure of eight pattern. It's important to do the same number of repetitions in each direction, no matter if there's an injury on one or if they have bilateral hip issues. Um, and the last thing that we're going to talk about, and I can come back to any of these, um, if she'll let me, but she's a little amped up. Some maybe gentle massage. Oh, maybe just for a few minutes. With with cheese helping, maybe? Yeah. I'm gonna give it a shot. So again, I think that a lot of times owners are concerned that they're gonna hurt their pet, right? But in rehab, we don't do anything that's going to hurt. Like, and the thing is your pet is going to show you, sorry, I know we're way over here, aren't we? Yeah, would you be able to move a little bit out more? <laughs> okay. I'll also turn off the mic, temp. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so, the thing is we're, we're not ever gonna do anything uh, that's going to harm these guys. And so everything is very gentle and what they will allow. The thing is your your dog, your cat, they're gonna tell you if what you're doing is too much. Um, the cues usually are even just a quick turn of the head back at you. So I usually start with just gentle stroking so they get used to the touch. And then for Juno in particular, I was focusing on the muscles along the spine. So you never want to press down on the spine, but in just about every pet, you can find it. And then I usually work with my thumbs on either side of the spine. And just, I usually work from towards their head. Everybody can hear me okay? And then I work back. Hi. She's like, where'd you go? <laughs> and then again for Juno in particular, I was working mostly on the back and on the rear limbs. The thing to always keep in mind um, for both the rear and the front limbs is that you're gonna want to work distally or towards the foot and work up. And the reason behind that is that if there's any swelling, you're working it back up towards the body, um, and then the lymphatic system will take care of it and, and get rid of it from the body. So you always want to start low and work your way up. Good girl. And again, just very gentle. Um, you want them to enjoy this. And so usually I would just start with every pet with 
just hardly barely, you know, touching and moving, getting them used to the movements. And then you could probably try to get a little, a little deeper. But if they're turning and looking at you like there's some sort of discomfort happening, you stop, you move on. Move on to a different limb or do, you know, something else with them. So then again, here, I'll come on this side. Mm -hmm. So you're starting distally. It's usually just below the knee is where I start. That's where they have, so these are the hamstrings in the back and then the quadriceps in the front. And so you can even do one hand in the front, one hand in the rear, and just gently move up towards the pelvis and the spine. Hi. I know you're not used to me doing the front as much. And then the same here, just above the elbow, you're gonna have your triceps, biceps, and you're gonna do the same thing. Good girl, Janelle. And just kind of work up towards the shoulder. And it's something that really anybody can do at home. It's good for bonding with your pet. So these are things that you do kind of when you're chilling out on the couch in the, in the evening. Um, they enjoy it. It's, you know, you're bonding with your pet and you're also providing some, some relief. So. having trouble um, even just getting outside to go to the bathroom. Uh, slings are really helpful. So on Amazon, I think they're like 20 or $25. Um, so those are the ones if, if your dog is mostly just having hind limb issues. Um, it's got like a soft lining, adjustable straps. There are multiple different companies. Um, those, are, those are great and helpful, especially for some people who might have mobility issues as well. And so they need a little bit, you know, like maybe picking up their pet isn't so easy, can slide it under their abdomen, and then use the strap to lift them and help them get out and back inside. Um, the other things, um, and I'm sorry I don't have any photos, um, there are harnesses, multiple different companies make them. The one that I'm the most familiar with, um, especially with dogs that are uh, that, that have um, deficiencies in both the front and rear limbs is the help them up harness. And the nice thing about that is it's got um, straps in the rear, straps in the front, and actually connects in the middle and has handles for both the back and the front. So if the pet needs support for both, you've got handles here or if you're just needing one, you can just disconnect it and use uh, to help support the rear limbs or the front. So again, multiple different companies make them, the Help Em Up company is just the one that I'm the most familiar with. So, any questions? Please just, hi. Hi. Um, Hello, so friend. <laughs> So I've always thought this, but I never thought to actually ask you because I would think of it as the most inconvenient time. But the the, the texture on the thing, you know what I'm talking about, does that ever like drive them nuts? Do, you, do they like toe tap and not like the texture or does it not bother them at all? Usually not. Okay. And a lot of what the texture is for, um, also, well, not only to kind of help with stability, but for the pets that have neurologic deficits, mm -hmm. so they actually have that feeling of something on their, yeah, like on their toes, underneath their feet. Very cool. Whereas cats, I feel like. Oh, <laughs> cats are not easy. No, I can't no. imagine. Not at all. Yes, ma'am. How do you do the tens to bodies? Because mm -hmm. those, those have to be stuck on, do you have to shave them? So typically, yes. And so typically when that when we use that is post-operatively. So the one that comes to mind um, is, let's say, 
the dachshund that's got um, intervertebral disc disease. They've, they're recovering from a back surgery, so that area is shaved anyway. Oh, okay. And so then we're able to apply the electrodes that way. Just because um, I'm not in the medical community, That's but okay. just from my own personal yes, experience, uh, the TENS devices, it's just a temporary oh, yes. fix where a so different it's therapist mostly used mm -hmm. an interferential device, and that worked. Do, do you try those at all? I don't have access to an interferential um, because they're pretty pricey. Um, so the device that I typically use is mostly for pain relief. So it just sends like a tingling sensation. And then also the device ca can actually um, cause um, extension and flexion of, of a particular muscle group if you're trying to work, say, particularly on quadriceps. So a dog that had the, the knee surgery that I was talking about, the uh, cranial cruciate ligament repair surgery, so that area is already shaved again. And so then you can put the electrodes on either side of the knee and then cause, or you know, actually like create that flexion if they're having a lot of trouble um, post-operatively. Are that. the laser de devices pricey or is that able to be a home they are, unfortunately, yeah. I know, right? <laughs> because that's the thing. Um, in order for me to do what I do, I, well, number one, I'm a licensed veterinary technician, so these things have to be prescribed by a veterinarian. So if you are a person thinking, okay, you know, my dog has hip dysplasia, you know, or arthritis, um, I'd like to contact Laura about her services. Um, I do need a referral from a veterinarian to do so. Um, but then again, going back to your question about the, the, um, the price point of those modalities, that is another reason why it's very helpful for me to partner directly with a veterinarian because I would be able to, you're talking in the thirty dollars to $35,000 range. Oh, wow. Okay. Ah, I know. <laughs> So, but you can contact your veterinarian, just about every single veterinarian in town has one. Probably all, yes, so. Um, price range for underwater treadmill. Do you really wanna know? It's about I 40, know. it's about 40,000. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Do they have those for big dogs? So these are, the, in, in the packet that I got, these are the largest ones. Oh. So what do you have? What, uh, what breed of dog do you have? Belgian Malinois. Okay. And he's on the upper end. He's 26. Okay. With the so what you can do is, and what um, I've seen people do, you can actually use, so say you're already at two of these, right? So you could have the rear limbs on one and the front limbs on the other. <laughs> right? No, it takes, it's, again, this dog makes it look like, you know, no problem, but it takes time. Yeah, it's a big time commitment, that's for sure. Anybody else? Yes? I have a little 10 pound uh, Italian Spitz. Um, we had one for 20 years, and what happens was, as he got older, the repetitiveness of jumping up on things, he couldn't so now we have a younger one, and is there any um, like proactive things I can do for joint uh, and, and nutritionally? So the two nutraceuticals, uh, the two companies that I'm familiar with um, and that I've learned the most about are Myos. Um, I'm sorry. I should have brought pens. <laughs> so it's M Y O S. Um, so that particular product is was specifically designed for muscle health and maintaining muscle health. The other product that's very similar, the other company is called Flexidin, F L E X A D I N, Advanced. I think. 
B-E-T-O-Q-U-I-N-O-L, Betoquinol, is the company that makes that one. And then also for muscle? Yes, exactly, muscle and joint. And, and you know, like, there's mixed information out there. Some things they don't start it until they're older, and then I don't know what the preventative and what. Mm -hmm. So I know for myos in particular, because we had, um, an in-service where we had a, well, it was over Zoom, because the gentleman is from the East Coast, um, but we had a lunch and learn, and he talked all about the, all the different Myos products, and they can be used with pets of any age, yeah. Thank you. And then for, to, for your other question, the things that you can do, again, the circling, the figure of eight walking, um, those are things that you can do at home. Again, core strength, uh, strengthening the muscles along the spine, um, both very important. And then let's go back. I used couch cushions sometimes to yep. balance and do stuff like that too. Uh, um, yes. So yeah, you can put couch cushions on the floor. Again, we actually tried this because she's doing so well without the yoga mats, the very first uh, time that we came to the library, so that was two Fridays ago, and the surface was too slippery, right? So, again, because their safety has got to be my number one concern. So having, so doing it like at home, you would want it to be a carpeted surface, or you would want to get, you know, something non-skid like this um, to do these exercises if you're going to do them inside, which of course it's winter now, apparently, right? So. So that's what we have to resort to. Um, so yes, like Marty was saying, uh, cross couch cushions, you can use their dog bed and even do it in the hallway. So if you have a couple of dog beds, you can throw them in the hall and just have them walk over them. I know, again, these things seem, you know, like what is that actually doing? But it's actually doing quite a lot. Is foam better than fiber fill? I would. I'm not sure that it actually matters. Um, I think that the more give it has, because these are from, um, they'll probably not be mad at me if I don't plug this, because this big Barker pet, pet bed company sent me this for free. <laughs> and they're just an amazing company. Yeah, they're great. Um, but something that's probably a little more, you know, lumpy and that sort of thing is probably better for the rehab aspect of things. Um, so, and then the sit to stand exercises, again, mostly focused, that's focusing on the rear limb strength. Um, but again, you know, you don't want to do probably more than about 10 repetitions because dogs get bored with things, right? You know, um, so I would say if you can do three to five repetitions a couple of times a day, then that's amazing. Like again, anything that you can do to m just maintain the muscle that they have and then the flexion and extension of the joints that they have is, is great, right? Yeah. She's doing so good. <laughs> I can't believe it. Yes, it does. Um, any idea how much the water Basically, my plan is to go off of what they were charging and then basically get like a third of that. Um, and honestly, right now, I'm blanking on what they were. But it's got to be something also that works for Dr. Hunt as well. So that's something that, um, that we need to discuss. Unfortunately, it has been just like every veterinary clinic, right, guys? Um, a pretty crazy summer, and it's just continuing usually. This time of year is kind of usually when uh, things kind of settle down a little bit for veterinary clinics, but not around here. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's definitely a discussion we're going to have to have. But please.
please reach out to me um, uh, if you've got any more pamphlets, and I would, you know, I'd love to discuss that with you. I had a dog who um, had a partially torn cruciate ligament, and she had water treadmill in Raleigh for her life, oh, and it just did, she just did an amazing yeah. recovery with that. And sometimes we have surgery. Right, right. And then again, you know, like, if there's anything that we can do to, this is another thing that, you know, potentially we can avoid having to do surgery in some pets, right? I mean, wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> you know, because having to put pets through that is, um, even though I work for, for, for a veterinary clinic, again, we want to do the most that we can without having to, that's kind of the last resort, right? If we can.
for dogs over 50 pounds, right now the gold standard is called the TPLO, um, tibial plateau leveling up um, which it's basically you use hardware to correct the angle um, so that they're walking more appropriately. Um, I have seen multiple uh, of those surgeries done. It's pretty traumatic, if I'm, if I'm being honest. They're actually cutting through the bone. Um, another procedure that's very common, it usually has a better success rate in pets that are 50 pounds and under. It's called the MRIT. Um, oh my gosh. Help. No. Okay. <laughs> Not <working>. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, they basically they use actual fishing line, it's sterile of course, to stabilize the, the patella and the knee. Um, and for many dogs it works very well, but I have found that if the dog is over 50 pounds, or the research has shown I should say, um, and also in my own experience, that um, the MRIT technique sometimes will fail or will feel more often if the pet is over 50 pounds and also if they're overweight. Um, so that's why the TPLO is kind of now the gold standard. And that could change because just like in human medicine, veterinary medicine is changing at, you know, every second, every minute. You know, they're coming up with new, new therapies and new things. And that's why I'm so happy to be able to offer this here because from my understanding, I'm the only person with the certification of AP. So. Are you making any inroads with some orthotics people about doing braces and things like that? So basically what we do is uh, there are a couple of companies that if, if we're thinking that that is the route to go, and again, that would be my decision, that would be your veterinarian's decision. Obviously, I would work with them on that. Um, there's two companies in particular that are just amazing, and um, we kind of um, refer all, all those cases to them. So a lot of times, but what we'll do is not here. we'll do the no. So the your veterinarian will will be able to work with the company to do the measurements, and then they create that apparatus for them. And then the thing is about the, the, the couple of companies that I know of, and that's again mostly through um, the labs that I attended last summer um, and that sort of thing where these companies actually came and did demos. Um, if it's not working for your pet, if the fit isn't right, whatever, they're gonna make good on it because it's also not an inexpensive endeavor to do, to do something like that. And so the, the companies are going to work with you to make sure that you're happy and satisfied. Thank you all for coming.